So, uh, a good late afternoon to you all, our comrades. John and Dara, my apologies. They were eagerly waiting for us and calling Perfect and others the rest. You know, the spokesperson was engaged in a meeting which she had. Uh, felt would end ahead of time so that he could be here in time but of course uh, he had to delay by a, a further minutes so our apologies for that and we we hope you take it upon yourself to uh, feel for for us and and him given the nature of his responsibilities as it were yeah, I must say, you are welcome, all of you, to ZANPF. It's been a, a quite a while and a, a long time since we, we last met with uh, the spokesperson. And I'm sure because of that, uh, it is the reason why a lot has been said that loses. You know, that is no sense at all about us. But who am I uh, to speak about uh, uh, the part when the spokesperson is closer uh, to me and here with you uh, to speak to you and uh, the position of the party with regards to all those within the political market as it were. So thank you very much for coming. Uh, Comrade the spokesperson, I'm sure uh, you are in your final minutes ahead of departure. Yes. So the opportunity is yours to engage your your fraternal colleagues. Okay. Thank you. Over to you. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen and ladies, comrades of the press. Uh, we are a little bit uh, behind time. I want to apologize uh, for keeping you. I know that you've got deadlines and other commitments, and we should always try to keep to queue. First, I want to. Also, second, I want to apologize that uh, there had been an announcement about a political bureau today. It has been cancelled. Uh, these are administrative issues. We also have an important visitor from Russia, you know, a very high level official coming into the country, number three in the hierarchy. You know, Russia has always been a good friend of Zimbabwe. A lot of our young people were trained in Russia and in the former Warsaw Pact countries during the war. Uh, and uh, we have maintained that fraternal relationship with Russia. And of course, there's the tension going on now because of the war in, between Russia and Ukraine. So it is an important visit to have uh, uh, somebody from Russia, a friendly country, come to Zimbabwe. And perhaps uh, along the way, avenues of peace can be uh, explored so that, you know, the, 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 there can be no more relations between Ukraine and and Russia. Uh, the other thing is uh, that uh, we, it's been some time since we've had a press conference. Uh, we want to hail the president for his visit to Davos. You know, Davos is the United Nations United Nations of businessmen. It is in Davos that all the captains of industry gather to exchange views about. Uh, investments across the globe. But also prominent scholars do go there, and just the consultants, strategists, under the ambit of the World Economic Forum to see how the world is performing before, now, and in the future. So it was quite an honor to have our president go on a second trip to Davos. He skipped one trip before because there were things were unsettled. But he, uh, that as it may, he went with a lot of feathers in his cap to, to Brussels first. Uh, the mere longevity of his rule is we are four years into the Second Republic, going for elections next year. Uh, many people had said he would never rise to power in, in Zimbabwe. 
he rose to power. Then many people, they say that he would not survive in power in Zimbabwe. He has survived. And, uh, you know, many people now know that he's, uh, he's going to be around for the next five years according to the constitutional provisions of, the, of Zimbabwe. You know, he has allowed second two terms. So he's now, you know, going for his uh, second term should the elections pan out as a scheduled in 2023. Uh, the good thing that uh, being that the ruling party has already endorsed him at the Bindura conference, uh, that is the sole candidate of the ruling party, and that, uh, you know, ZANU-PF is united behind him as the candidate of the ruling party. We are going to the elective Congress, and the same message is coming from the organs of the party with the successful youth league endorsing him. The women's league is uh, around the corner. It will equally be endorsing the president, you know, because that is already coming from the provinces. So, uh, he, he, you know, the, 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 why I'm emphasizing this point is that uh, businessmen like stability in a country. Businessmen want, well, like certainty in a country as investors. And he had all this to offer about Zimbabwe at Davos, certainty and uh, stability in the Zimbabwean body politic. Mm. The other thing is that Davos centered on Africa. It is, the, it is becoming the continent of choice for investors, youthful population, a lot of resources. And with the African Free Trade uh, Act, real prospects of African integration to offer this huge market of one point something billion people to the world. So it is an exciting time and our president was uh, snug in among the African leaders who had uh, uh, were the center of attraction, the, 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 the choice, the choicest uh, offerings were coming out of the Davos were given to African leaders. This is a good thing because business makes people react and interact on a wider scale because goods and services unite people more than people just uh, talking uh, which we politicians do so it is a good thing that the president was with african leaders at davos and uh, then he went on further to meet uh, prominent business people uh, from switzerland which is an important country uh, you know for switzerland is a, an example of a country with a small population but a huge footprint in international trade. So the companies, they do well. And so they, they you know, they, they are a center of excellence in business. And to have Swiss companies take an interest in Zimbabwe, which they are doing, and to host our president, which they did, is a very good thing. Then finally, he had a good meeting with the diaspora from Europe all over. And a lot of excitement from our white diaspora too. Everybody is beginning to identify with home, which means that the Second Republic is scoring big. You know, we are finally overcoming the divisions of the racial uh, and, uh, and apartheid past of this country, the wars of the past, because the younger generation are coming together and saying we are all Zimbabweans. Everybody had a flag. And there's a lot of, there was a lot of dancing of uh, traditional Zimbabwean music. Uh, even from uh, you know the, uh, our wide population, you know, in the diaspora, uh, because they 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 are, they are identifying with home because things are good at home. Uh, it's a good thing to. And there was an attempted demonstration by the MT Triple C, an attempted presence which fizzled out in Davos, and I think it is also fizzling out even in the sub region. If I am not sure, if I if my information is not right, some people may have been. Made the persona non grata in South Africa, <laughs> but probably that is for the South African government <laughs> to announce. It. <laughs> we don't announce uh, relations between South African government and uh, the, and the people whom they may not want in their country or whom they may not uh, feel that they should belong. So we may be getting into very, very difficult territory for the Triple C because the message is losing favor, both at government level and in, in, at diaspora level. So, you know, we are a pan-Africanist organization. We are progressive. We believe in the Zimbabwe revolution. We spawned the Zimbabwe revolution. 
in the 1960s as part of the Pan-African nationalist movement. We make no bonds about our allegiance to that cause and we wave the flag from high up the mountain to say we are Pan-Africanists. Uh, those who fail to identify and those who comport with foreigners against their own country they will run out of steam because very soon the foreigners will change their allegiance. And that is what is happening because uh, we had signing agreements today. And you can't believe it. We're signing, everybody says, and I'm sure everybody says, Ambassador Mtoma says, they signed another agreement with the Chinese or the Russians. No, no, not this time. We, we signed with the EU, the European Investment Bank, which is really the private sector arm of the EU for major global investments. Three agreements, I think, have been signed, which is really a major boost of confidence in Zimbabwe by the EU to say engagement and re-engagement is working out. That's what it is. We are succeeding with the EU investment. I, I saved in Brussels, so I know what the European Investment Bank does. It only deals with countries which have promised, which uh, which have got uh, business uh, prospects which are bright, because it's the private sector. You are taking money, you know, promoting private sector business. So having the vote of the EU in European Investment Bank into the Zimbabwean economy is really a major boost. This is big, because the EU is the biggest trading bloc in the world. It is also the biggest source of capital general for investment abroad. 27 countries coming together who have been the bedrock of modern capitalist development before America and also which is the home of America originally. It's to have the EU have a confidence in Zimbabwe. It's a good thing. So all in all, we are doing very well. And that, that begs the question, why is the private sector, I mean the private place, looking for smudges when the paper is all calico clean. It's a clean paper. We are doing well as a country. We are doing well as a party. We are doing well as in, 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 with our economy. Why do you want to have negative stories coming out of a situation when everything is so bullish? Businessmen are bullish. Yes, there are issues of uh, our currency, which is the last redoubt of those who don't like their country to, to succeed. The speculators are thinking they can achieve what the regime change failed. They tried to, MDC tried, the ZCTU tried, uh, various uh, NGOs tried, they failed. But speculators think that they can come in and uh, upset the currents and try to cause people <coughs> to march into the street. But the president has got a handle of it, on it. Our dream team, Minister Nube, the governor of the Central Bank, they've weathered the storm. They are on to it. Because the fundamentals of the economy, are, uh, everything is good. Why would the currency be the only exception which is not good? When everything else is good, why are you the only one who is marching out of step when everybody says left, right, left, right, left, right? So only the currency is saying right, left, right, left. Because they are speculators. So the government has uh, uh, pierced the veil of the speculators, particularly on the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange collapsing $500 billion or something like that overnight. It means it was a half and for speculators. Because the stock exchange is supposed to reflect the vibrance of the economy. You cannot be out of work with the economy. Why do you want, why would you collapse 500 when the economy is not collapsed? 500%. It means something was wrong there. It was a haven for speculators. And the regulatory authorities have identified the, the, the culprits, and they are on to them. And there are also some errant banks which have been helping. I think they are being dealt with. There are also some good banks which have not been part of this mess. So the currency issue, which is the last frontier of our independence, the restoration of Zimbabwe's currency, we are winning that war because it is the only one which is left out to win. The military we won, the political we won, the land we won, the remain mining resources we won. You know, now it's left the, the currents. If we can, if we've been winning on all so many fronts, why would the currents be as an exception? Because after all, the currents is a reflection of the transaction process in an economy. So everything else is good. Why would the currents be not good? So it will be sorted out, and people will finally have the Zimbabwe dollar as the national currency. 
we earn enough in this country to support the Zimbabwe dollar. All the countries in the region, uh, they don't earn as much foreign currency as they are, but they have stable currencies. Why would Zimbabwe not have a stable currency? And somebody put it uh, idiomatically. He said Zimbabwe is a big mine as a country, a big mine. <laughs> That's just, you ask about of the top 80 minerals wanted in the world, 62 are in Zimbabwe. And most of them in substantial quantities. So, you know, and we are selling them and we are, we are investing in them. And so the fundamentals of the economy in the long term are good because we are exploiting a very tre a treasure trove of minerals. Why would you not have confidence in the currency of a country which is a major producer of lithium? very soon and we have got deals in lithium which now exceed 400 million US dollars never in the history of this country three lithium deals exceeding 400 million US dollars we are getting world-class investors in lithium we will be building process production plants in Zimbabwe to produce the batteries you know the same battery which this phone uses is the one which is in the car, car lithium cobalt and uh, nickel. All those minerals, we have them in huge quantities in Zimbabwe. So the make, what Kuwait is, what Abu Dhabi is in fossil fuels today, Zimbabwe is going to be in electric storage batteries in the future. This is our country and it's doing well. We are doing the same in platinum, we are doing the same in gold. Young people are producing gold in quantities which you can't, you can't believe in because the price has been stabilized. There is no more arbitrage in gold in, in the gold price and a lot of young people are taking money home. And so, so that's all in US dollars. The two auction floors are doing very well with tobacco, high grade tobacco. And so all the ingredients of current stability are there. So what is wrong with the currents not maintaining value? Because there are some people who are speculating against it. And the president has got a hang on that, and it's being handled. So we give, want to give an assurance to the people of Zimbabwe that the currency issue will be resolved. And for those who think the currents can be a substitute of regime change when they failed as trade unionists, when they failed as NGOs, when they failed as opposition parties, now they want to hide behind current speculators. It won't happen. Zimbabwe will be, continue to be stable. Zimbabwe will continue to have certainty in its, in, 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 in its political prospects. And this is good for business. That's why the top steel producer in the world just signed a deal to connect to the ZESA. And the funding is coming from local institutions, which is a very good thing because local institutions are finally recycling the nostrils which are in their accounts because they are confident of the long-term prospects of this economy because of this investment which is being excited by a world-class investor going to do up to 20 million tons of steel in the next five to ten years before, before 2030. Zimbabwe will be in the top five to top eight in the whole world in the production of steel in the whole world. So this is good. This is the, and for, for investors, their horizon is usually five to ten years. That's, uh, that, that's good enough for them. So these are the things which are happening in our economy. It's, it's a good thing we are, we are here to tell you that our confidence in, in, in is not uh, based, it's not groundless and that the, what the president has done by opening for business he has made everything gel to where it is today that we can say Zimbabwe is a haven of investment by everybody from everywhere. We are becoming the destination of choice with an economy which is one of the fastest growing on the African continent, even by IMF standards, which an economy with an economy of former detractors and naysayers in the EU business community now wants to be associated with. That's why they are signing contracts with Zimbabwe today. Now, and then you get people with good successful conferences. Then they said to find something like the candidates did not want to stand because somebody was as scared of another candidate. That's not that's not fair on part of US Day. If those people were afraid in the women's league about a particular candidate, she at number one post. There were three other posts. Two, three, four. 
where they could have shown their courage to challenge those ones. But they didn't. And they did and they still lost. So where do you create news about ZANPF certain candidates being scared about anybody? That's nefarious. That's irresponsible. He doesn't reflect what happened on the ground. Because if they were afraid of candidate number one, they would have challenged the candidate number two or number three or number four. And they did and they lost. So why do you create fiction? We are hoping that, you know, this and it, it, it goes, the same thing was happening with the Youth League. This group is going to be like that, this thing. We know which part is written by factions. It has gone from A to Z as, as MTC. Each one of their leaders losing or, being, or, or snatching power and putting an acronym to a new party, a splinter party. Those things don't happen in Zanupia. <laughs> but you still want to say faction reading. Why don't you concentrate where there's factions? No one factions which have manifested themselves in leaders who can still not find common ground even when they are going to elections. Please spare us of the smudge which is associated with the opposition. We are a united party. You know, there are creations about, uh, you know, you know, we are going to have the, the, this one, you know, take over. The party has had a, a, a conference. The party is having con uh, congresses, I mean, conference, elective congresses. All the organs are saying we have one candidate. But somehow some people want to find something else from somewhere else. Please, let's try to, you know, I get calls everywhere. And from some of the newspapers, it's like everybody in the, in the newsroom, when they want to write something, they look for something about uh, They phone me. So I've got people from the same stable, 20 of them coming from the same stable, phoning me about this, this or this or come. And you know, everything is to try to see how you can denigrate an PF. It's not right. Try to see it as a party which is uh, in government, which has been given legitimacy by the people of Zimbabwe to rule. So who are you to try to challenge the legitimacy of ZANU-PF when the people have chosen it to be? And the chances of your preferred candidates, they are there next year. There will be elections next year. But most likely, there will be elections when the, the steel plant in Chivu is bellowing out smoke, producing one, one million tons of steel, saving one billion tons of foreign currency, and adding one billion tons of foreign currency. That's two billion shot in the arm from this major product. It means that the railways finally have load taking coking coal from Wange, bringing it to Chivu, taking limestone, bringing it to Chivu from Berengwa maybe, uh, taking uh, uh, ferrochrome all the way from Vurgi to Berengwa along the Great Dyke. So there will be load and there will be a balance sheet for the NRZ. This is a good thing. So the NRZ can go to the bank and borrow. And when they borrow, they can develop the railway line because there is a load, heavy load. This is what a steel plant does to a country. This is what a President Mnangagwa has done with the Second Republic. These are good things about this economy. That's why the diaspora is so happy. They see what is happening on the, from afar. So why would journalists from the newsroom miss what is being seen by the diaspora from afar? You know, opposition the journalists. You should, you should be together with the everybody else you know, who is seeing positives about our country. Incidentally, it means technicians from all over the world are going to be coming back home. Installing blast furnaces for steel in Zimbabwe requires high level, by, by the premier steel company in the whole world, requires a level of skills which will make sure that those Zimbabweans who went to the diaspora can now come back home and do jobs which are commensurate to the hard current skills which they are used to in the diaspora. This is now happening at home. Young people not looking for a plane to go to go and a businessman to, play, to pay them abroad. No. Young people coming home because businessmen have been invited by President Nangagwa to come and prosper in Zimbabwe so they don't need to be up. Good for families, good for the countries, good for for synergies between those who remain and those who those who remain and those who went abroad. This is the story of Zimbabwe now. This is where we are going. So, you know, look, you know, we, we want to say to you know, please don't always look on the negative side about things which are happening in our country when there is so much good which is going on, which everybody else 
is seeing other than some newsrooms which are refusing to see that reality. Uh, there are other issues which I would like to understand. Just excuse me so I consult my director. I need my guidance. Yes. We also look. Uh, it's it's okay for parliament, this uh, elected sovereigns, uh, electees of the sovereign people of Zimbabwe, to express their certain views. But we also belong to a party, and we have the majority. Uh, it's 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 unbecoming on the part of some of our members to go and express views in parliament about certain issues before they've been. We have a caucus at the party. Uh, you know, we don't want to create, uh, we are part of discipline. We come from a long history. We also have a, a very strong political military tradition. We produce the best army, the most disciplined army. So our lady winning at the United Nations, the yes. trophy of Brisbane. By the way, she comes from my almost my village. <laughs> You know, what's your name again? You know, I'll, I'll find out. You know, she comes from Mundoro, which is my village. I'm, I know. You know, so we produce good soldiers, which get recognized all over. You know, so we're part. We are kind of discipline. Why would somebody from the ruling party want to go and express things about the diaspora, or express things about who, when the president should be elected vice president? We should he discuss them here. So. Uh, we want to say, the, as spokesman of the party, I take exception that some of our members are going to raise issues which should be discussed within the party so that we develop a common position. Then they can go and express a position which is reflective of the general consensus within the party. To go out and start talking out of 10 is not the ZANU PF way, it's not the revolutionary way, it's not the way of the. We have no problems with the, you know, having variant views, but let's discuss them if you're a party member and come out. Otherwise, if we continue on that path, we become like the other parties which have finished the alphabet, everybody having an individual view <laughs> and ref refusing to reconcile with the other one until you change. Once you run out of the alphabet, you have to change the name. So you start <laughs> all over again with the alphabet to splinter. So I, 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 a spokesman of the party, I appeal to discipline from our party members. Yes. Discipline, consultation within the confines of the party and expressing your views strongly within the confines of the party and winning people over to your position so that when you speak, you speak reflective of the party position. So I want to appeal to our party members to abide by the regulations, by the discipline which ZANU-PF as a party is known for. I think then, hey, yes, I was talking. I'm phoned again by the opposition press. Somebody has been kidnapped. I say, the police is there to deal with issues of kidnapping. That's their constitutional mandate. The same police which make sure that, you know, you walk home to this job today safely. It's also there to make sure that there are no kidnappings in society. If they can make the MDC sleep peacefully at night, if they can make the triple C sleep, walk about doing their business day to day, that same police. Because it's not most, most Somalia, it's not a disorderly country. So why would you want that police not be on your side on other issues when you want it? for your protection, even for your personal protection, even for the safety of your party members. So why, if you go to the police report, then if there's a case, the police will go to the magistrate, to the, to the, to the prosecutor general. Mm -hmm. Then the, the prosecutor general will take the matter to the courts. Then the courts will decide. 
Now this repeated story of kidnappings and kidnappings which are fake, which end up with my Mgombe something going is this way, and then you know people you know claiming we in the parliament are claiming that we were kidnapped when it is, was all false. They were main street shopping, you know all these things. You know we, you know they are not right. You know for the MDC to keep continue and the Triple C to continue when they run out of publicity. When they, when they, when they run, we are offering good news. Remember, my initial stories were all good news. That's what the NPF does. We try to make good news because good news is one which wins elections. We try to make people's lives better so that we win elections. To be a party which is continuously complaining and complaining and complaining, I mean, how do you become a, you know? A, Every day I will not to our family except to complain. That's what the MDC is all about. Complaining. You know, America do this to Zimbabwe. A British lord is seen with a young man of no consequence. He is seen and you complain to him. He starts giving orders about how Zimbabwe should be run as a democracy. He is not even democratically elected himself. He is a lord by heredity. <laughs> how can somebody who is in the house of lords by heredity, not by election, start teaching us? We are a revolutionary party. We went to, you fought, we fought for the people to be where they are today. And then we were baptized by elections in 1980. Our revolutionary, our democratic pedigrees are impeccable. It can be said by Lord Oates. He doesn't have that kind of pedigree as we do have. But anyway, the MGC loves those people. Why do you always like people who are deviants in their society? You know, you know who should to be your champions? And you don't like your Zimbabweans who are your friends, you want foreigners who are your, who, who try to be your friends. Your friends, charity begins at home, you can choose. You can choose friends, but you can't choose na fellow nationals. You can choose friends, but you can't choose your fellow nationals. That's why we are a nation together. So the MDC once again, the Triple C's once again, please spare us the Lord Oats of this world. They are products of a Reddit. <laughs> they are products of a feudal society which is out of form which is not democratic, and they are trying to teach us democracy. Please, it doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. It has been a terrible week, a terrible grim harvest also for us war veterans. I'm talking now talking as the chairman of the Zimbabwe National Liberation War Veterans. Uh, General Chanakira, we met at in Mozambique as young people in 1975. I also went to war in 1975, like many others. He is late, a very, very committed comrade during the war, a brilliant mind in post-independence reconstruction of, of the Zimbabwe army, you know, including in, uh, meritorious awards in various campaigns of the Zimbabwe National Army, a good family man, and a professional soldier, but also a good civil servant. That's what he was. He was doing very well in the office of Vice President Chuenga. I knew him personally. He was very much involved in negotiations for the uh, compensation of the white farmers so that we bring on board and close a chapter um, with our, uh, an important economic section of our population. These are the attributes of a patriot, you know, before the war and after the war always working hard to make sure that Zimbabwe goes to the next place. I'm very happy that the party has since accorded him national hero status. I feel very much part of it because I've known him since we trained together and fought together in Mozambique. But he's not the only one. We are the driver of our late General Tongo Gara. He was named as Advance. Um, his name was Savano, I think I, I got to get the names right, but uh, you know, we got to provide the names. We also were at Nyazonia together. I knew him, he was on, he was a good driver, you know, he used to drive all over the country, Chibuku, and it was not yet a big company. And later I went to war, and he was the driver of our General Tongogara the day he passed on. Uh, he died in Kwekwe, and he's been awarded provincial hero status. And uh, there is also our former Minister of Finance, Dr. Kruneri, who passed on 
Uh, he was also a personal friend in South Africa. Then there's also another comrade, you know, who was not mentioned, Comrade Elias Wondo. I vote to get his family name. But if you check in the Sunday Mail, the Chronicles, he was interviewed. Comrade Elias Wondo was a deputy to General Mujuri in the Zipa on the Zimbabwe Zana Forces side. He was very active as a Kwem commander in Mgagao. He was active in, in the front. And uh, the resumption of the war in 1975, he was very much at the center of it. Of course, uh, you know, things are never linear in war. There are always uh, disagreements. Uh, and because we are too busy, maybe you don't have enough time to solve those disagreements. And some people fall, fall by the wayside, like the, what happened to him because of the Vashanti differences with the other comrades. So he came back, not as part of Zanla forces, but we remember his Zanla background. He's a great patriot. He passed on, and uh, we, you know we say condolences to his family. I knew him personally. I knew him uh, because uh, when we went, we joined the war from university. There was always this. Uh, attempted bring everybody together where you are accommodating each other to jelly so that you become one army. There are issues which arise because we're coming from university. Some people were not were suspicious about us. We were punished left, right and center in some very unsavory ways. But in the end, you know, we, you know, we came together, we found each other, and we formed a very united army where the same people now understood us. These are challenges which you find when you're building an army from scratch. We were building an army from scratch. There was no textbook about it. There was no precedence about it. So you grow up and you find your way by filling the stones as you cross the river. That's what happened. And sometimes certain things don't turn out well. But he, I want to say Comrade Elias Hondo was a very, very good, com was a very committed uh, comrade, uh, I mean, commander of Zanda forces. And uh, uh, we, we extend the Zimbabwe National Liberation War Veterans Association condolences to his family. He died in Gok, I think. That was his hometown, mm, his, home, his home area. So we've had a bad week, you know, in terms of uh, war veterans passing on. We are getting old. It's natural that it should happen that way, but that is the way of the world. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Chief, for an elaborate uh, and clear explanation of the party's positions with regards to those fundamental national issues. I'm sure the spokesperson has touched on the president's visit to Davos. We now appreciate, appreciate how crucial it is, and it was, as it were. The spokesperson also focused on uh, the current issues and our booming economy and the position of the party with regards to the undisputable sole presidential candidate for 2023, Comrade Idim Langagwa, the party's president and first secretary, and that discipline in the party is sacrosanct. Deployees of the party must always tow the party line and speak a position of the collective. Uh, those are the, the key issues that the spokesperson has given, besides, of course, his final remarks as a, a veteran and the leader of the veterans. With regards to condolences of comrades that have been lost in this, what he describes, a dark week for the party. Uh, comrades from the press, the opportunity is now yours to uh, interrogate and uh, engage the spokesperson on all the issues raised and those not raised. And uh, like I often say, this is quite very crucial because in this uh, occasion, you have an opportunity to clarify before you go out to lie or misrepresent the party. So it's quite very, very crucial, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, yeah. yes. It's 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 I should put it yeah. quite clearly like that. Yeah. So thank you very much, uh, my sister. You speak your name. I'm sure you are new to us. You are very much welcome to. Thank you so much. Uh, mm -hmm. My name is Kumbayo Nomashi. I'm from Slide Media. So the. Uh, 
information about uh, three agreements which uh, the government made. They only listed one, um, which is signed with the EU investment. Um, um, do you want to know which are the two? They're all signed by the EU. There's an EU investment bank team in, in, in the country. Uh, and uh, one, I think, was signed by First Capital. Mm -hmm. The other one was, uh, I think, NMB. Uh, and there's a third one, I think. But you can check with the Central Bank Governor mm -hmm. and the EU. The, because uh, they were press conference. I think they must have been yeah. press briefings about them mm -hmm. from elsewhere. So check, check the facts or even form the EU embassy mm -hmm. so that you get accurate information. But definitely for sure, the in European Investment Bank is back to do business in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. This is a very major boost of confidence to our economy. Yes, thank you very much, my sister. Another question? Please do. So he's, don't, let, don't, 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 don't be nudged by him. I'm keen. <laughs> yeah, we don't. Before he, nudges, before he nudges you, I will encourage you. <laughs> <laughs> Lift your hand, come to me. <laughs> I will answer any question. Mm -hmm. If you can't ask it here where there's then don't 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 phone me afterwards and start asking uh, nefarious issues. <laughs> uh, because uh, mm -hmm. uh, if you are very confident about what you phone me afterwards, could I mean uh, what has that got to do with this NPF if, if people quarrel mm -hmm. elsewhere? Uh, you, know, you know, that is a job for the police. We are a non-violent part. Mm -hmm. We don't believe in violence. We don't believe in kidnappings. Mm -hmm. And we have institutions which deal with those issues. Go to them. Uh, and if you, are, if you are not happy with them, we go to parliament, raise the issues in parliament where you are represented mm -hmm. about the behavior. But you can't have, you like the police for one thing and you don't like the police for another thing. It's not a cafeteria. It's a a la carte menu. Mm -hmm. You like the police, like them across the board, mm -hmm. because they make your life easy. That's why you are here in a peaceable manner. All peaceable because the Zimbabwe police, Zimbabwe Republic police, is making sure that the country is law and order. Mm -hmm. So give them, the, you know, their due. If there are misunderstandings about kidnappings, get let the police do the job. Mm -hmm. Don't come to Zanu PF because we are no, we don't organize. Can we? I mean, this is a nice young man. Look at me. Do you, how can people like me be organizing? <laughs> <laughs> we don't do that here. Yes. That's why if, if you want, you can ask about that. We will answer it for Jagere Rebana. Mm -hmm. But then we have preempted it by saying it ahead of you. We have nothing to do with kidnappings. We, in, we believe in non-violence. We believe in peace. We believe in the institutions of Zimbabwe, uh, constitutional in institutions to discharge their duties for the benefit of all Zimbabweans in a fair manner. Mm -hmm. yeah. In fact, uh, even just to add more details on that uh, story, yeah. uh, Comrade Spokesperson, I think, you know, the Zimbabwe Republic Police has released a statement outlining every detail of how the incidents, uh, the incident, so-called abduction uh, took place and the individuals involved mm. and that uh, there was a relationship of some sort with the, and it was or probably a case of a jilted lover involved in the issue. What is quite very sad is uh, the, the opposition, attention-seeking elements, particularly in the CCC, and uh, quite so said that in those uh, antics, uh, Jeff, yeah. they get big bold headlines talking nonsense. Mm. Uh, they say he was, uh, she was abducted, and that she was abducted by Zambia people. Yet uh, it is the police has released a statement outlining every detail that it was a case of a jilted relationship uh, involved between the two, and they are investigating. And for instead of the opposition commiserating with the family. We would wish the family well in their search and the police, but the opposition is seeking to score cheap political points on a, a somber you know, situation that requires empathy. I don't know why a uh, comrade spokesperson victim would has become a part of their manifesto or electioneering strategy. Maybe 
you, you, you know that to share with our colleagues. Over to you, spokesperson, with those details. Okay. So you, uh, I, those are probably uncontested aspects because they are coming from the police, it's the only police which we have in this country. So I hope that the, the, the opposition will retract or have the pride to swallow their, their lies and say and apologize to the Zimbabwe people. And maybe along the way also apologize to, for trying to besmirch ZANU-PF on an issue which looks like it's a domestic affair which has gone bad. People are bound to have difficult problems in, the, in their day-to-day -day lives. That's why the police is there. That's why families have peace brokers. That's why, but for political parties to enmail themselves in all that, <laughs> ah, it means good, good or us. That's why you cannot win for elections. Because you are focusing on all the wrong things in society. Focus on the things which we focus on development, major investments, you know, building roads, you know, you know, building power stations. This is, you know, crafting relationship with Europeans even after so many years of, of, of difficulties because we are reaching out. The message is getting through that President Mnangagwa means well and he means what he says about the engagement and, the, and the re engagement. Reach out to fellow African leaders. You know, he's a senior statesman who knows pan African history from the time he started as a young revolutionary, at probably 20. And the IU was formed when he was already in the war. And then he was a child of the African Union, you know, being given guns by them, being organized to go to train in China and Egypt. He's got a lot of all this history about where we came from, going to war twice. Not every Zimbabwean went to war twice. You go once, you never want. I tell you, I was there. You never want to go back again. <laughs> but the president went the, the second time. He's a committed patriot, a brave man. So this is this is the story which we should be talking about Zimbabwe's identity with Africa. But you know, we want to find other stories. No, no, no. Please, let's try to be nation builders, not dirigentialists. I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, spokesperson and. Uh, uh, there being no further questions from our colleagues from the media, uh, it is my hope that uh, the spokesperson will be represented uh, authoritatively but also very accurately with regards to what is said. What is said are party positions, as it were, and pronounced so well. I wish you well, comrades, we meet. Uh, just to announce that uh, we will be doing accreditation for the women's conference uh, coming out a couple of weeks to come we'll be looking forward to having you all there with no exceptions the spokesperson is opened the party so that it works with you and uh, as we seek to do so our position Moses Matenga and your news uh, works crew is such that you have access to first-hand information Lying or writing false news becomes your own choice, but you would have been given and fettered access to the store of ZANPF as it unfolds, isn't it? So we'll be looking forward to having you all. Especially yeah. about uh, candidates who are said to have won because of this or that. Yes. When the democratic elections in ZANU-PF are there for everybody to observe, that's why he's asking for accreditation. Come and see it for yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't go behind and create so because that didn't come from the ZANU-PF people. Mm -hmm. you know, we want to build a country. Let's try to be honest and mm -hmm. candid mm -hmm. and fair mm -hmm. to each other. News works. They are all my friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are friends of this <laughs> So, why did you? Why did you ask? I've been calling you. I've been calling you to ask a question so that I answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah. So much. Thank you so much. Thank you very, very much. Young lady. And you read it. But I
Pinavan, which boxes you, Mujer. Okay, for a papa, cheap pump, sorry. 